Hello, hello, and welcome to my very first YouTube video. So, to introduce myself a little bit, I've been playing KSP1 for a very long time, been a uh, super long time fan of the uh, of the series, and like many other people, I was super excited for KSP2. Now, as we all know, KSP2 uh, probably didn't live up to all of our expectations, but I feel like there's still uh, a lot of potential in the game, and even though it's super buggy and performance is also pretty rough, I think there's still a lot of fun to be had in the game. So today, uh, what we're doing is we're doing a, a KSP modding challenge, which is a challenge from KSP Modding Society Discord. The challenge is uh, to fly and land on Mun, take off, fly to Minimus, land, and then go back to Kerbin with a single launch. Now for this mission I was considering three different craft, and uh, as per usual in nearly all of my KSP missions I chose an SSTO, or space plane design to be more precise. Uh, the other designs that I thought about was a uh, twin habitation module, which would basically uh, uh, land on the Mun, uh, leave one habitation module, like a long term habitation module with plenty of uh, plenty of corporal storage in it, leave it on the Mun, take off with the uh, upper stage, go to Minimus, leave a second long term habitation sto uh, storage type of deal on Minimus, and then go back to uh, Kerbin with uh, an additional escape stage, but that craft turned out to be well over 500 parts, and even with the uh, newer KSP uh, 0.1 update, even though performance is honestly a lot better, I feel like that's still a, a little bit much for a uh, KSP2 mission. The first thing that I was that I did really want to make work was a fully reusable SSRT or a single stage rocket technology. Uh, basically, the rocket would use a first stage to uh, get into LKO. The first stage would detach, and with a suicide burn, it would land back at the uh, Kerbal Space Station. Uh, technically, I do have a design that does work for it, as in it has enough delta V, it can land, it has like decent stability, the uh, Mun and Minimus uh, stage can go to the Mun, take off, land back uh, on Minimus, etc, etc, but... The bugs basically prevented me from doing that, sadly. Every time I separated the uh, first stage from the second stage, because it's basically two different craft, I just get like various bugs of one or the other stage just exploding, my maneuver nose disappearing, etc, etc. So basically I decided to default back to what I usually do, which is uh, go and do missions with a space plane, which is what you can see me doing here now. And now I'm just, as you can see, previous me is just setting up a, uh, a little descent profile to the Mun, and we'll see how it goes shortly. Sadly, even though uh, the first, uh, even though the first patch did address a lot of issues and honestly addressed a lot more than I thought it would, we still have a lot of, uh, we still have a long way to go for KSP two. The first bug you'll see shortly. In my hubris, I decided to detach or to extend the landing legs fairly high up above the months at the surface, and it really didn't work out too well. The first time, I didn't really understand what, what happened since my uh, SSTO just randomly exploded, but on the second attempt, I realized that yeah, it has something to do with the landing gear. The landing gear is when deployed still seem to. Uh, generate an impulse, which I'm pretty sure just disintegrates the craft if you're going too fast near a surface. So basically I decided to just play it safe, uh, deploy the landing gears when I was basically just above the surface and that seemed to have worked. Still generates a pretty large impulse, which really messes things up for me, but it wasn't that bad. Also, even though the design is decent, uh, I should have definitely included more RCS, basically. I thought that I could only include one... Uh, what is what is that thing called? The uh, oxidizer RCS on the nose, to pitch the nose up for a takeoff. But it turns out that... Uh, 
reaction wheels alone in the Mark III cockpit were not enough to properly control this craft. As you could see in the uh, Mon Descent, the craft was wobbling all over the place. And with size being as bad as it is right now, it didn't help things either. But yeah, we managed to get a pretty decent Mon landing. Maybe a little bit uh, harder than I would like it to be, but... Got a little bit of a bounce off of the engine, a little bit of a scrape with the uh, left wing, but eh, we made it, and it was also decently efficient. So, having conquered the first bug, and our Kerbal having stretched his legs after a couple of days in space, we're gonna try and take off again. Although, sadly this is not my first attempt trying to take off. Here we encountered the second bug, which... I didn't have the patience to deal with. Basically, after achieving a landed state and loading a quick save, as you can see here, my maneuver nodes would just not work. I could not I could make maneuver nodes, but I literally couldn't see any of the um like any of the lines basically. So my workaround was to uh basically go back to the DAVAB, launch, uh, spawn my craft in LKO, waste as much fuel as possible to get myself to uh Basically, my workaround for this was to uh, simply uh, use cheats, spawn myself back into LKO from the uh, launch pad, uh, expend uh, enough fuel to be to have roughly about the same amount of hydrogen that I would have in a month's low orbit, and spawn myself in a month orbit, basically. I mean, technically I did cheat, but realistically it didn't really affect anything, it was just the only way to get maneuver nodes back. In theory, I could have done this without maneuver nodes, but eh, it would have been super fiddly, plus this craft doesn't have that much excess delta V, so I kind of do need to have uh, precise burns. On the upside, 0.1 did actually uh, fix, I mean, uh, fix trajectory lines, we can actually see our trajectory past a uh, different gravitational body, which is extremely helpful and a very nice fix. Along with, honestly, some pretty massive FPS fixes. I feel like this patch has been both both inspiring and a little disappointing at the same time. Honestly, I didn't expect the uh, Intercept team to fix quite as many issues. They fixed uh, like over 300 bugs and uh, optimized some stuff. Optimization probably being the most noticeable difference. Since now I'm getting about twice as many FPS when launching Baker Craft. Effectively, they just optimized uh, fuel flow, so uh, having multiple engines drawing from like mini tanks uh, doesn't affect your FPS nearly as much as it would in the past. Anyway, uh, as you can see, I've taken off from Mun with a little bit of cheats, and now I'm just plotting an intercept with Minmus using a little mod that allows me to have slightly more precise maneuver node controls. Uh, intercepting Minmus from the Mun isn't too difficult. You basically just draw your periapsis to uh, around Minimus height from the Mun, uh, correct your orbit inclination, and just wait for a, um, a decent intercept window to uh, do an additional little burn to get yourself into Minimus sphere of influence. Which you can see here. Honestly, I uh, did spend a lot of time in KSP2 already. I got maybe, uh, I have like, I don't know how many hours exactly I have, but I have like well over 100 hours. Before the patch, I uh, kind of restricted myself to mostly just building craft instead of actually going on missions. Since, like, building craft wasn't really an issue, and I think the uh, VAB and testing is probably the best part of the game right now. Uh, but... Actually doing missions basically forces you to deal with like a lot of bugs, like wings falling off, uh, maneuver nose disappearing, your uh, trajectory randomly changing, craft exploding, etc, etc. So I generally don't do missions, funny enough in that uh, in my entire playthrough of KSP2, which is well over 100 hours, I've only done like a handful of missions, I've only been, like 90% of my time has been spent building... Uh, SSTOs and testing them in LKO, basically building them for like various missions like the uh, weekly challenge to air launch from Lave, or an EVE SSTO, or even have a uh, 
dual 5 single stage design right now. In theory, it should be able to deal with dual 5 single stage, like without any uh, staging whatsoever. But honestly, what I love the bugs currently in the game, even with trajectories being fixed, I don't really feel like actually sending it just yet. Maybe it's gonna be a... Uh, well, probably gonna be a video for another day, once uh, one or two more patches roll in and make quick saving not as painful. So as you can see, uh, while I was talking, uh, past me basically made it from on all the way to minimus. This landing went a lot smoother, a lot more of a uh, textbook SSTO landing, I would say. No uh, engine bell or wing scraping here. Of course, the uh, low gravity helping us a lot, and the lack of RCS is really a problem on minimus. So yeah, uh, around here I actually remember that I forgot to plant a flag on the Mun, but you know, not that big of a deal. So from here on out, we face other issues. Uh, face the same issue when taken off from minimus, where my uh, maneuver nose would just simply stop work, stop to work. It seems like if you get a landed state and then uh, quick save from there on out. Your, uh, your ability to create maneuver nodes basically disappears, or rather, well, you can still create maneuver nodes, you just can't see them, so they're basically uh, invisible. Also, uh, both descending and ascending to minimus was quite painful. Sadly, you're restricted to three times uh, time warp, so it took a really, really, really long time to uh, both descend and ascend from minimus. The footage around Minimus is uh, playing back, back at like 800% speed. Though this isn't the only ascent that I had to do for Minimus. Here, that you'll shortly see, we'll encounter a different bug. I'm pretty sure it's a new bug that wasn't in the previous uh, build, but as you can see, I'm basically uh, plotting an encounter with uh, Kerbin. As you can see, my periapsis is quite low and I'm Comfortably in a uh, stable orbit around an elliptical, but a comfortable stable orbit around carbon, but oh We go into time warp and I'm in interstellar space So I'm not entirely sure what happened here when I was leaving the month sphere of influence the uh, trajectories were actually correct for uh, Where I would be when I uh, leave the uh, month sphere of influence, but when going from minimus, they're just completely off I don't know, maybe something bugged when I landed on Minimus, or well, I was on the intercept, I have no idea, honestly. And as you can see on the um, second attempt, once I reloaded the quick save, I couldn't see my maneuver nodes, so I just had to, uh, so I just had to eyeball it, basically, which is not that difficult, realistically. All you have to do to get from Minimus back to Kerbin is just burn prograde until you leave uh, Minimus Fear of Influence, and then just circularize around Kerbin. Now at this point I had very little Delta V left, so what I was gonna do is do a couple of aero brake passes. Honestly, I don't really know what I did on the first one, since I uh, I came in a little bit too shallow and instead of uh, waiting for a better encounter on the next uh, on the next rotation I just decided to burn retrograde, which wasted nearly all of my fuel. As you can see I only have like 130 kilograms of hydrogen left. I mean, it didn't uh, prevent me from doing the mission, but it did sadly mess the mission up a little bit later, as you'll see. So here we're just doing a, uh, a little aero break uh, around Carbon. Uh, another little nifty trick that you can use is, as you saw when I came in on my initial, uh, on my initial like circularization around Carbon. My uh, my trajectory was a little bit off angle. I wasn't in a perfect polar orbit, but by uh, angling my craft a little bit sideways, if you have wings, you can actually just correct your uh, inclination literally for free while doing aero brake turns. So basically, we slowed ourselves down uh, enough, and here is where my previous mistake comes to haunt me a little bit. My mistake of uh, burning retrograde for no reason in the atmosphere instead of just using aero brakes. Uh, so as you can see, Kerbin is on the dark side of Kerbin. Or uh, not Kerbin, the uh, KSC is on the dark side of Kerbin. Which is really not optimal. I mean, it's fine for gameplay, but really not optimal for a video. 
I did try to um uh, wait somehow for a Kerbin uh, for a KSC encounter when it was on the light side of of the, of the planet, but uh, I just didn't have enough Delta V to uh, recircularize and then uh, set myself on a suborbital trajectory again without like wasting like two hours doing it due to the uh, extremely low time warp limitations that we have in the atmosphere. So I basically just decided to uh, land on the dark side. It did take quite a bit of tedious uh, gliding, since I again didn't have any Delta V left. I basically had to uh, glide in the upper part of the atmosphere and aero brake when necessarily, necessary to get myself on a pretty nice curb and trajectory. Uh, it did boost the contrast so you guys could actually see something of what I'm doing here, but yeah, it's probably not optimal. Another pretty weird thing uh, that happened here is that my craft did not seem to be very stable once it was on low fuel. Now, I did actually test this one. It was, I mean, it wasn't the most stable one on low fuel, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, I was pretty sure it was bugged, and after landing I did, uh, I did confirm it. Because after landing I uh, went into a uh, time warp and uh, to uh, try and get a nice uh, landed shot in the daylight and once I exited time warp my craft just faced through the uh, through the ground and fell into carbon score. So anyway that's the video. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.